and banking data you couldn't call with the Thank you for joining us today and I hope to see you again at our future events. I'd like to begin by respectfully acknowledging the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation and paying my respects to their elders past and present. Hello everyone. Welcome to another Affinity Lunchtime Lecture. My name is Stephen Blanks and I'm a member of the Affinity Advisory Board. For those who've never attended an Affinity event before, let me briefly introduce you to the organisation. Affinity was formed by a group of young Muslim Australians in 2000. Their aim is to promote multiculturalism and foster intercultural and interfaith dialogue by building bridges <coughs> between different groups in society. To give you a brief idea of the wonderful work that Affinity does, they've put together a short uh, video recapping their events in the last year or so, which we'd like to share with you now. Australia is a warm, welcoming, open country. Having respect for all people, regardless of race, regardless of religion, regardless of gender, and very, very importantly, regardless of a, the colour of a person's skin. People of all kinds are, are seeing differences, I think, a little more clearly. For me, it's about returning to the lived experience that, that people have on, on race and ensuring that we live up to the best of our traditions as a country. And the culture that they set will be the culture they inherit. To be able to share more information, whether it's intelligence or case management material, whatever it is, faster and better. In addition, the Department of Social Services is working closely with other departments like employment, education and training, human services and immigration and border protection on improving employment outcomes for humanitarian entrants. And this has got to be the largest number that we've had here. The night is about you and us uh, and as a community. Learning from each other, that's what Australia allows us to do. We are working together to make New South Wales safer. In fact, we have done that for many, many years. As we've come from so many other lands that we were able to meet here as one. We are the most culturally diverse country in the world. Uh, we all learn a little bit more about ourselves and about our community. Ramadan is that time of year that Muslims go deep. They reset the clock, take extra time to consciously reflect on their lives and reaffirm their commitment to God and to the precious bonds that connect us all as family and brothers and sisters in humanity. Courage, you know, dedication, you know, um, a mateship sense of, a sense of fairness. What we have seen and experienced by words and music this evening are the sort of things that hold us together and enable us to move forward together. A great career and it's wonderful to see them in the context of a great organisation, Affinity. First of all, I'd like to thank our sponsors here, especially uh, Mr Ahmed Polat. Thank you so much. Thank you too to the Foundation uh, for the opportunity to be here. Faith is so profoundly important for our development and humanitarian work. Because we've got some expertise here uh, that is, uh, when it's brought together, is extremely valuable. So I asked the Vice President Global of Education for Microsoft why. And those are the values that I would continue uh, to advocate being taught in law schools in this country. Uh, from a UN report describes Yemen as now the world's worst humanitarian crisis. Thank you all for, um, for being here 
Thank you, Ahmed, and uh, the Affinity team uh, for allowing me to, to speak, ladies and gentlemen. It's an absolute honour to be here tonight to help launch an exciting new lecture series focused on young people. Well, thank you very much for having me. Um, Barack and the Affinity Intercultural Foundation, um, I'd like to acknowledge the fantastic work that you do in the community and um, bringing different cultures and people of different religious backgrounds together. I think it's fantastic. How human rights safeguards children and young people. This is indeed a commendable goal and I'm delighted to be here today to be part of that dialogue. In my view, Affinity is doing excellent work to inform and advance multicultural Australia to keep peace in this country. Congratulations to Affinity. Thank you, Affinity, for this wonderful opportunity. I, with Sev, laud the work of Affinity. Uh, there is no other organization working in the field of interreligious relation that does it the way they do it and promote actual encounter of an ordinary sort between people of all sorts of diversities. I think it's heartwarming. It's one of the f few things in life that really continue to give me hope and joy. Thank you for joining us today and I hope to see you again at our future events. Thank you so much. I would like to introduce today's facilitator, Pauline Wright. Pauline has been a friend of mine, I think now for nearly 30 years. <laughs> Pauline was admitted as a solicitor of the Supreme Court of New South Wales in 1985 and has been in private practice since then and is a principal of PJ Donnellan and Co solicitors in Gosford. Pauline was the president of the New South Wales Law Society last year in 2017, having served on the Council of the Law Society since 1997. She chairs the Environmental Planning and Development Law Committee and is Deputy Chair of the Future Committee. She's a recent appointment to the Executive of the Law Council of Australia. She sits on the Law Council's Access to Justice, National Criminal Law Liaison and Equality of Opportunity in the Law Committees. She's also a past director of the Law and Justice Foundation and the Legal Aid Commission of New South Wales, chairs Legal Aid's Monitoring Committee and has sat on a number of panel selection committees for Legal Aid as well as its Human Rights Committee. Apart from her wide experience in local government planning and environmental law, Pauline also has considerable experience in property law, commercial litigation, extensive background in criminal law and was a long-term chair of the Law Society's Criminal Law Committee. Please join me in welcoming Pauline to the rostrum. Thank you. Well, thanks very much, Stephen. It, it is a delight to be welcomed by an old friend and, and we're all here among friends. I'd, I'd also like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation on whose land we're gathering today and pay my respects to their elders past and present. But I'd also like to acknowledge their youth because it's in their hands that we hold our hope as a nation for a reconciled future. So, um, before I introduce you to our speakers, I have also been asked to just acknowledge some people here today. Of course, um, we have Zia Ahmad, the Managing Dress Director of AMUST, Mahmoud Al Mashadani, Vice Consul of the Office of the Consulate General of Iraq, Mr. Mahmoud, uh, oh, sorry, uh, sorry, this is odd. Anyway, we have Abid, uh, Emeritus Professor and President of the Egyptian Council. Carl Hartleb, Consul General, Australian, Austrian Consulate General, Sydney. Mary Karras, Chief Executive Officer of the Ethnic Communities Council of New South Wales. Hector Palaez, Consul General of Argentina. Um, Zubeda Rahman, President of the Muslim Women's National Network of Australia, Inc. Professor Shirley Randall, AO, Managing Director of SRI, Proprietor Limited. Andrew Semple, Rector of St. James King Street. Carolyn Valbuena, Principal Delivery Manager of the Department of Premier and Cabinet. Peter Dukas, F Founding Director of Denison Toya Lawyers. Heather Topp, Reverend, Ambassador, the Australian B Ambassador for the Parliament of World Religions. Jane Anderson, Adult Educator at TAFE New South Wales. And we've got 
a number of our Affinity Advisory Board members, uh, apart from Stephen Blanks and myself. There's also John Cleary, who's a retired presenter from ABC, Dotha, um, Kathy uh, Ahir from UTS, Mary Croc, Professor of Law at University mm -hmm. of Sydney. So welcome to those special guests and to all of you. I'm pleased to introduce today's speakers. As you probably all know, Michael Kirby has achieved a lot during the length of his illustrious law career. It would take the entirety of the program to tell you everything he's done. Um, so I'm going to mention some key things only to highlight. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> don't worry, there is plenty. <laughs> Michael Kirby was Australia's longest serving judge when he retired from the High Court of Australia in 2009. He is the, um, the High Court Justice that, uh, when I was at university, everybody thought that there should be a special commemorative Kirby doll <laughs> <laughs> to take the place of the Barbie doll. He was Australia's longest serving judge when he retired from the court in 2009. He served as Deputy President of the Australian Conciliation and Arbitration Commission from 1975 to 1983, if any of you were born at that time. Chairman of the Australian Law Reform Commission, 75 to 84. <laughs> Judge of the Federal Court of Australia, <laughs> 83 to 84. <laughs> President of the New South Wales Court of Appeal, 84 to 96. President of the Court of Appeal of Solomon Islands, 95 to 96, and Justice of the High Court of Australia from 1996 right through to 2009. He's undertaken many international activities for the United Nations, the Commonwealth Secretariat, the OECD, and the Global Fund Against AIDS, Tuberculosis and Mar Malaria. He's also worked extensively in civil society, being elected President of the International Commission of Jurists, 95 to 98, his recent international activities have included member of the Eminent Persons Group on the Future of the Commonwealth of Nations, 2010 to 11, Commissioner of the UNDP Global Commission on HIV and the Law, 11 to 12, Chairman of the UN Commission of Inquiry on DPRK, North Korea, from 2013 to 14, and member of the UN Secretary General's High Level Panel on Access to Essential Healthcare, 2015 to 16, He's also, of course, heavily engaged in international arbitrations, domestic mediations, and the teaching of law. He is honorary <coughs> professor at 12 Australian and overseas universities. In 1990, he was awarded the Australian Human Rights Medal. In 1998, he was named laureate of the UNESCO Prize for Human Rights Education. Enough. <laughs> it's only a couple of more things I just wanted to mention. In 2010, he was named co-winner of the Gruber Justice Prize, and in 2011, he received the inaugural Australian Privacy Medal. The honorary degrees of Doctor of Letters, Doctor of Laws, and Doctor of the University have been conferred on him by various universities in Australia and internationally. So there we have it in a nutshell. <laughs> it was a really big nutshell. Some nutshell. <laughs> Emeritus Professor Ron McCallum, though, AO, has also achieved an illustrious career, and that also has to be abbreviated. But he studied law at Monash University, graduating in 1972. After teaching at Monash for 18 years, he moved to Sydney in 1993, where he was appointed to a full professorship at the University of Sydney. Blind since birth, this appointment made Ron the first, the first ever totally blind person to be appointed to a full professorship at any Australian or New Zealand university. He served as Dean of the University of Sydney Law School between 2002 and 07. In January 2011, on his retirement, the Senate of the University of Sydney awarded Ron the title of Emeritus Professor. He'll tell you that means has been, <laughs> but it doesn't. It means fully revered, um, fine, upstanding and brilliant man. Oh, um, his expertise in labour law and occupational self and haf help, self and hefty, that's good. <laughs> health and safety saw him appointed as chair of, of uh, or member of various federal and state inquiries 
Professor McCallum was made an Officer of the Order of Australia in 2006 for his services to tertiary education, for industrial relations advice to governments, for assistance to visually impaired persons and for social justice. In January 2011, Prime Minister, Prime Minister Ms Julie Gillard designated Ron as Senior Australia of the Year for 2011. Professor McCallum was nominated by the Australian Government to stand as an independent expert for the UN Committee on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities when that committee was first established in 2008. The primary function of that committee is to monitor the implementation of the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. So Ron served as inaugural member, then chair of this committee, and then as vice chair until the conclusion of his mandate on the 31st of December 2014. He also served as the chair of the UN Committee of the Chairs of all the UN treaty bodies in 2011 to 2012. So I think you'll agree with me that the, um, the lived experience of both of these people will, uh, will make for a really interesting session on interpersonal relationships and human rights today. So I look forward to it.